Smith Randall here at TwitchCon 2016. I'm here with Evan at Tryon World's uh, booth, TwitchCon. Um, Evan, you got a lot of stuff going on here at this booth. Uh, tell us a little bit about what Tryon's doing, what you're excited about. Well, I'm excited about TwitchCon, of course. This is uh, year two, and it's been uh, fantastic so far. We've uh, been thoroughly enjoying the new uh, San Diego location for the show. Uh, for Tri for Tryon World's execution here, we've been doing a uh, uh, kind of an experimental booth, honestly. Uh, we went through a couple of different visions of the booth, and uh, this is, of course, in my head, I'm going through different visions of uh, the different layouts, uh, but for you who have not actually seen these layouts, because, of course, we didn't share them, the original booth looked much like you would see for a generic uh, con uh, consumer convention. We realized, you know, oh, well, maybe we'll do a whole other like, kiosk, and we'll have a little walled-off press section, and we'll do, the, uh, do it kind of more like uh, we've done for other shows. But then we thought about some more, and we revised it entirely. We stripped out half of the uh, the kiosk, we tore down every single wall, and instead, we wanted to make it like an oasis within TwitchCon. We wanted to make it to be a destination booth in terms of like when your feet were tired, your phone was tired, your brain was tired, because what we were supplying actually here, for those who, uh, I guess who can't smell coffee through uh, through sound, we actually have uh, you know, the coffee station running, we've got waters at the front, we've got a charging station in the back, uh, nice beanbag chairs, everyone's a lounge. Beanbag chairs are awesome, oh, yeah, oh, very comfortable. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's a very fine testimonial, yeah. thank you. And uh, this is, of course, all in the shadow of a nine-foot-tall, inflatable pup statue. So, um, honestly, uh, we have been swamped. It has been a fantastic show for us. Uh, the the area where we're actually interviewing right now in that beanbag area has been full since we opened uh, today. And uh, yesterday was even more busy somehow. So uh, it's just been a uh, fantastic affirmation of uh, what was originally experimental uh, and a, an idea. And to be able to see the concept uh, not only come to fruition, but also uh, be a resounding success uh, fills my little gamer heart with joy. So there's Tryon World obviously has a lot of games uh, in its uh, repertoire, in its library here. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on in the, on the gaming side. So, so uh, what do we have to look forward to coming uh, out of Tryon World in the, in the coming months? Oh, this season is going to be a fantastic one. I, one, I cannot believe that it is October 1st, but that's besides the point. <laughs> we have uh, four of our games actually have major releases uh, uh, this year alone or early next. Uh, for the starters, we have Atlas Reactor, which is currently in Head Start, started yesterday. We have uh, and it will be launching on October 4th, Tuesday of next week. Uh, in doing uh, with uh, regards to Atlas Reactor, uh, in terms of the booth presence, so uh, naturally we're very focused on it here with, uh, with the, the gigantic, large pup. Uh, yeah, and it's the, all over San Diego too. I saw lost I lost uh, lost pup marketing all over downtown, which is amazing. Our, uh, yeah, <laughs> yep, our street team has been prolific. They've been really fantastic about getting the word out. Uh, if you're uh, browsing through uh, San Diego, even a couple of days after the convention, you'll probably see some uh, little flyers talking about hashtag Lost Pop with little uh, details on how to find him and uh, and what to do next. And then uh, additionally, you'll see uh, Lost Pups actually on the uh, sidewalk as well. And people who take a picture of it and tweet it out with the hashtag, let's just say something cool might happen in response. But uh, beyond that, we also have uh, Arcade, which is releasing its 3.0 update, which is a major step uh, in terms of uh, new content. I've got. We've been having uh, streamers of all stripes coming up saying, oh my gosh, I remember Arcade back when. I can't wait to jump back in for all the new updates coming in 3.0. Uh, for that, we're actually going to be releasing a series of uh, producer letters and feature articles over the next uh, couple of weeks uh, detailing all the changes in Ascension. And uh, we let's see, what else we got? Uh, we have Trove coming to uh, next-gen consoles. That's PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, if not later this year, then early next. We haven't really announced a date for that quite yet. And then finally, and it's going to escape me until I can think of it, Rift, of course, how could I forget? Rift, we have Starfall Prophecy, uh, its latest expansion. Uh, again, going to uh, be dated pretty soon, but coming out later this year. And uh, we're really, really excited by all the uh, <laughs> the excitement on Rift in that. Uh, Rift mouse pads, which we uh, have actually, we pulled out of storage and we had uh, sitting on the front of uh, the booth. We did not expect them to actually uh, go flying. We expected more of the attention to be on. Oh, come on, our new free tiles. swag. It is free swag. Sure, yeah. yeah. But what was fantastic is actually we had all of you, oh, Rift, I really still enjoy playing that, or I haven't played that in a while. I can't wait to come back. We heard about Starfall Prophecy. So it's been uh, fantastic. I actually had to pull the mouse pads off the front of the desk because they were going too quickly and I wanted to last all three days. So, no, it's been a real blast. Uh, we are, <clears throat> excuse me, We've been um, signing. The main focus of the booth actually is to sign up people for the Tryon Worlds uh, Creator Program, which I will let you now ask about. So we're yeah. transitioning from a little segue action yeah, here. Yeah. So tell me about this uh, this Creator Program. Fantastic. Do tell. 
So uh, the Trial Worlds Creator Program started off as a, uh, a very small list, a little Excel spreadsheet of uh, a couple of folks who were very proactively interested in ArcAge uh, about two years ago. Uh, this included, you know, big name streamers, uh, folks that uh, were taste makers or have been following the game since its uh, original Korean release. Uh, since then, the creator program has turned into a website with a full application flow. It has grown uh, from, again, dozens to now thousands of applicants and hundreds of members and is now spanning not just uh, one or two games like Arcage and Trove, but actually spans all six games with cross promotion between each. More than that is actually now manifested into this very booth because when we were designing uh, the booth for TwitchCon, we realized, no, we don't want to do just a simple you know, uh, product soap case. We want to actually have the creator program be front and center. We want that to be the main action item to do here. And so the front desk is all about signing people up for the program, providing the little uh, pup pins, which are actually rapidly running out. We still have one more day to go. Uh, but uh, really having a, uh, a great one-to-one -one on Yo, which each streamer, oh, sorry, what each streamer is uh, focused on, what their style is, what their audience is, are they variety, are they genre, are they focused on a, a primary title, and then uh, which of our titles is the best fit for them. And so it's been a, a real wild ride, just like having all the streamers telling me their stories about, you know, how they've been playing Trine Worlds games for years now and how they've been really enjoying seeing the growth of the program. Or they haven't heard of the program, they want to learn more about it. Or they're thrilled to know that we're giving out uh, giveaway codes, that we have uh, this program whatsoever. So it's been a matter of a really raising awareness and then acquiring uh, new members of the program so that they uh, uh, get in and then uh, get the goods and uh, make more content uh, with us uh, helping support them. Awesome. For, for streamers who might not have partnered with you already, uh, or maybe gamers who aren't familiar with your work yet. What do you think makes Tryon Worlds and the games that, that are created by Tryon uh, unique? What do you think makes it stand out? I'd say that, it's that we're really gamers first. We really want to make sure that, uh, you know, we, I guess as a, an individual who also, before I was senior life media manager, I was senior community manager. I helped uh, actually launch Arcage. I've worked on Defiance, Devillian, Atlas Reactor. Uh, and the focus, whenever I worked with any of these production teams, any of our developers in-house, was they wanted to hear feedback. They wanted to hear uh, key issues during early testing. Um, one of our um, key uh, responsibilities as community manager is actually much less on uh, you know, uh, content creation for uh, the website, I mean, that is an important part. Really, the biggest issue during early testing is collect that feedback, find the actionable data, uh, and then uh, disseminate that information in uh, weekly reports to the development teams so they can then action on, they can determine which things are, you know, high priority, low priority, which things are, you know, major burning issues, if, whether it's a matter of something which just needs to be uh, addressed with like a simple developer explanation. Hi, we're making this change. Here's the rationale why, here's the plan for it, here's where we're going to be accepting additional feedback on it. Others is, you guys made an excellent point here, fantastic, we're going to actually be making this change based on this very form thread. Uh, one of my favorite things that we did, I believe it was in uh, early arcades, was actually uh, patch notes with links to the individual form thread that helped influence the change. Wow. Uh, we've done that on a couple of titles, I believe. And so um, it's really that we are a very community-centric uh, studio, and we uh, really act on that. It's not just a, a byline. It's not just a tagline for us. Uh, I think the Creator Program is the latest uh, 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 advance in that area, the latest way we've been really uh, defending that, in that we have um, a program that has really uh, grown from the ground up to focus on uh, streamers, on their content, and I'm really empowering them to just be able to uh, do what they do and uh, do it better. So um, I guess in summary, this is all to say that uh, basically between the um, between how we've been doing uh, the, uh, between how we community manage our titles, how we make it very uh, community-centric, player-centric, make sure that uh, there's a active uh, communication from players to developers and then back again as community managers. We're then taking that ethos and applying it to how we work with creators, with influencers. And again, we might be at TwitchCon, we may be talking to streamers here, but when we're talking about creators, it actually expands much more than just streamers. We're talking about YouTubers, people on Hitbox, people on Beam. We have cosplayers in the program. We have guide writers in the program, people who uh, build wikias, people who build fan sites. I even have guild leaders in the program. So really it's people who are taking their love and their passion for the game and making it manifest into something much more than just the passion itself. And uh, honestly, that's what we're just going to continue to do and as we grow the program out. That's amazing. Um, last question. Yeah. What's next for Try On Worlds? Do you guys have another show that you're going to be going to this year or focusing on uh, all the many updates and releases that you guys have coming out? Uh, what, what's on the agenda? 
I was very lucky to actually uh, get even a, a couple of folks from the dev teams uh, for this show because obviously we have, like I was mentioning, we've got the four releases. We have Arcage, Trove, Atlas Reactor, and Rift, all with major updates coming out uh, this quarter. But even so, I was able to get uh, the lead animator for Trove, I was able to get the lead community for Atlas Reactor. And then uh, for later this year, uh, after TwitchCon, we still have, uh, I believe we're doing a small uh, event at New York Comic Con. Uh, and I think that might be it for this year, uh, which is incredible because convention season has been, as I'm sure you guys are all aware, crazy, crazy busy between Gamescom, PAX West, DragonCon, GamerX, TwitchCon here, and uh, now New York Comic Con. So uh, this season's always wild. We always, uh, we love doing it, but uh, there's definitely a lot of folks on making sure that those releases are the uh, biggest success they can possibly be. Well, Evan, thanks again for taking the time to chat with us today, uh, and I hope you have a great con. My absolute pleasure, and game on.